first thing that I will talk about in Java is how do we get input from keyboard? In order to do that, we have to use the scanner class. Scanner class create, uh, is used to create an object to uh, access the keyboard and get input from the keyboard, but not only from the keyboard. Uh, in the future, when we will start learning about inputting things from files or reading from files, we can we will also use the scanner class to read from files. And the scanner class can also be used to get input from other sources. How do we use it? We just create a scanner object. I will call KB uh, as an abbreviation of keyboard, OK? And uh, when we create an object, the default uh, syntax is such is like that. We after the uh, class name, we write the object name and then after equal sign, we write the new keyword. Then the class name, which is also the uh, constructor name or the, here we, we write the constructor name, which is same as the class name. And then between the parentheses, the parameters of the constructor. The parameter system that in in Java is linked to keyboard by default. So when we create an scanner object using the system that in as parameter to this uh, as the as the parameter of the scanner constructor function, then we create an object which is linked to the keyboard. And then by using this object, KB object, and by using the methods, we can read things from keyboard. Let's see a simple program. Before, of course, in order to use the scanner of the scanner class, you have to import java.util.scanner. Scanner is part of the util package. The uh, built-in classes of Java are divided into class uh, into uh, packages. Okay, the scanner class is inside the util package. Should maybe I should do a small introduction to packages here. Let's go and here I have some information about packages. The Java language has many package many classes. Okay, many uh, many class libraries. And some of the classes, like the string class, is part of the java.lang package. And those classes are uh, shared or are, are distributed inside packages. Each package contains several classes. The java.lang package contain uh, the most important and the most frequently used classes, like the string class, for example. And you don't need to import it. It is imported by default, OK? So any uh, class inside the java.lang package is automatically imported. You don't need to import them. The scanner class, for example, is part of the java.util. Any other class, which is part of the other packages, must be imported. How do we import? We just write the keyword java, the package name, and the class name. Java package name, class name, OK? And then the import, of course, the import uh, keyword before uh, at the beginning. After doing this, of course, as semicolon as in almost all statements in Java. After doing this, now we are able to use the scanner class in our program. We say class name, object name equal new, constructor name, which is same as the class name, and then system that in which is by default linked to keyboard. And then using this KB object, here you see KB next, next int, I can get an integer value. Or by using KB dot next double, I can get from keyboard a double value, okay, a double number. Or KB dot next line, I can read from keyboard the whole line. KB dot next will only input one word or one token. I will explain all of this to you in a few minutes. Let's go back to our basic input, simple input. Next method 
as here, for example, we have kb dot next. And all the, by the way, all these methods, all these methods are used together with the object name. Object name dot method name. This is how we use it. Object name kb dot and then method name next int, for example. In order to read an integer, we use next int. If the thing that we will input will be stored into a short variable, we will use next short. If the input integer will be stored in a byte variable, we will use next byte. If the input that is that the input integer will be stored in a long variable, we will use next long. So uh, for each of the uh, basic data types, we have a method, corresponding method in scanner class. Next int to read integer, next long to read long, next short to read short, next byte to read byte, next float to read something, a, a real number, and store in a float variable, and next double to read a, a real number and store in a double variable. And similarly, we can input true or false from keyboard and store in a Boolean variable. I haven't put here next car. Um, anyway, I will probably uh, we will not need it in our or in our course. And in order to to read the whole line, we use next line. The remaining part it reads the remaining part of whole line. If you have if we haven't done any input before. It will read the whole line from the beginning. And next, we'll read the next token or next word in the in, in, in the in in the input. Okay. I will give some examples in this program anyway. Now let's see how do we do it. First of all, create our keyboard object, the scanner object related with the keyboard. Then this is this opens a channel. You can think of it as such that it opens a channel to the keyboard, okay? The keyboard is connected to your program. It's a channel between keyboard and your program. And when you finish with it, then you need to close it. If you don't close, it doesn't create much problem. Uh, Java automatically closes when your program terminates, okay? But it's a good practice to close when you will not in do any more input from your keyboard. First of all, I will input an integer number. Here you see that I have print, not print and system dot out dot print. What is the difference between print and print and print and after printing the content also prints a new line and goes to the next line. But print doesn't print new line. It doesn't go to next line. It stays on the same line. So let's run this program. Enter an integer number. This is our output screen. Here I will enter, for example, some number, 748. So here with kb.nextint, when I press enter, it reads this number. Let's stop the program. Let's rerun it. Here now I will press space characters a few times. I pressed space characters four times, entered a number, and then press enter. It still reads it. It skips the leading spaces, okay? The next int will skip the spaces, will find the next word, which only contains uh, integers, or it can also contain minus at the beginning. Let's run it again. One, two, space, minus 87, for example. Minus is also allowed at the beginning. Of an uh, of an input of integer number. What I am doing here in the next line here on line 15, I have system out print ln double of that number is plus between parentheses. I am adding n plus n. My the n variable is the variable where I store the input integer into. Okay, the input integer is stored into the variable n. So here we have this, or what we can do, we can we could write instead of n plus n, we can write here, for example, two times n. Sorry, what is this? Two asterisk n. 
I my my keyboard is a little bit strange. Uh, next to uh, left arrow, right arrow, etc. I have greater than less than sign. It is just next to each other, and sometimes uh, and on the key uh, keyboard key, there is almost the same sign, the less than sign. So I do this, this kind of mistake. Two multiply by x by x. That's OK. So I multiply n by 2, and I print it after the double of, of input number is. So you see, you see that. Let's stop and run it again. Uh, minus 82, 164. Enter a number. Now it's printed enter a number. Since I used print, it didn't go to the next line. It is just on the same line. The input will be taken from the same line. And here I have double x is equal to kb next double. Next double method is used to read from keyboard something and interpret it as a double value. So here I will enter, for example, for 2.805. Okay. I can pre press some spaces. It doesn't matter. Okay. Leading and preceding spaces doesn't affect the next int and next double. It will if the, it will skip the preceding preceding spaces, get the word which contains the double number and give it to me. So this multiply by two is that one. Now it says enter anything. Because I will read the whole line. Now I have some, for example, a few spaces, one, two, three, four space, some characters, maybe some signs, blah, blah. Another, some, after some spaces, I write some. And after, at the end, I just read one, two, three, and maybe some more spaces, OK? Now let's expand this. So I have entered from here. To here. This is all I entered. Okay, some leading spa spaces, some spaces in between, some words, and maybe some extra spaces and some space at that. When I read the whole line, it next line, it will get everything. Okay, and the input will be accomplished when I press enter. When I press enter, it will get everything and run this statement kb dot next line here what i'm doing this is stored into string s1 okay next line gives me a string therefore i have to have some string at the left hand side of equal assignment operator and here what i say input is between less than and greater than sign i print the whole string so anything between less than and greater than is the string, OK? This is the whole string, which is exactly the same as everything I entered from keyboard before pressing Enter key. The Enter key is not processed. It is just signals that the input is finished, a line is ready, and then the program can read the line. So this string is this one. There are leading spaces, etc. Enter several words. Now here again, I will enter a few spaces. I entered a few spaces. Alibaba. Some spaces. Jane. Some numbers maybe. Okay, I entered a few things again. I entered these things. Here, when the enter several words is printed, I entered this. But here I have string s2 kb dot next and string s3 kb dot next. I have two uh, next function calls after the printing of the enter several words. My input this is this thing. Now let's go to the end. Press enter. When I press enter, then it will be able to you uh, read s2 and S3, because there are something in the output and enter is pressed. There are some uh, words maybe there and it will start processing. It will continue running my program. Here you see Alibaba, Jane and the rest. Now here I this I entered. This is what I, I entered. OK. 
Next, similar to next int and next double, skips the leading spaces. It just finds the next word. By word, I mean anything which doesn't contain space inside. Let's run it again, but this time let's enter something different. 12, 3, 8, 4, enter anything, blah, blah, blah. And enter several words. Now I will enter 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces, parentheses, asterisk, 8, 4, blah, blah, some stuff, some more spaces again, some characters, etc. etc. Okay. Now it skips the leading spaces. Next work like that. It finds the first token the first entity that doesn't contain any space in it. This is the first token or the first entity in the input which doesn't contain anything inside and it gives it to me. So I get that stuff. OK, this is given to me in line 30. String S2 is equal to KB dot next. I get the next, let's say, word or non space and uh, the, uh, the token which doesn't contain any space. And then I have another next. After processing this line 30, string s2 equal kb dot next, it will skip this. It will read this because it finds a space after this percentage sign. Then it stops there. It gives me this string. This string is given. So the input is processed up to that point. Next, on next line, on line 31, String S3 equal KB dot next. It will continue starting from reading from here. It will skip the, preced the preceding spaces. It will find the first token which doesn't contain any space in it. And when it finds a, a space after it, here there is a space, it will stop and give it to me, give this string to me. So it will read until after these two lines line 30 and line 31 in my program, string S2 is equal to KB dot next and string S3 KB dot next. It will read up to this point. Now it stopped, the, 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 the remaining part of the line is not processed yet. It is still in the input buffer. So here we print S2 between less than and greater than signs. We print S3 and then we have S4 without Having any printout, we have next, next, and next line. What happens we, uh, with line 30 and 31 here with these two lines? It is processed up to this point. So next line reads the rest of the whole line. The whole line will be read. Therefore, this statement, this string is stored into the variable S4, okay, on line 34 in my program, I have S4 equal to KB dot next line, it will read the remaining part. So uh, you can, if you wish, you can do this kind of reading a word, reading another word, maybe reading an integer, and then read the rest of the file, then the rest of the line, but I don't suggest to mix them together, okay? And one other thing is that, if you want to read a whole line after reading a next int and next double, what happens? Here I have entered 348, and there's a sp uh, and after this, there may be some spaces and may maybe nothing, but I have pre pressed enter. So if I don't do this KB dot next line alone to remove the remaining things, the rest of the new line of the line in the input buffer. If I just if I don't do this, if I comment this out, what will happen? Now let's go and run it. This is this is something important. I will give more explanation about that. And then eight point four. You see, it said enter anything, and immediately it's printed. S1. 
enter anything. Input is blah blah. It does it did that. Why? Because after in the next double here, after in like 8.4, at the remaining part of this line, there is a new line character. I pressed enter key from my keyboard. It is part of the input buffer. So this next line just went and read the empty thing, which is the new line here, and it I get nothing. Okay. So if you if you have in your program, this is very important. If you have in, a, in your program a next line after a next int or a next double or even a next, and if you want to read from a new line, you have to empty the buffer with next line. Next double and kb dot next line, which is not assigned to anything, it just removes anything left after this 8.4. Okay. So the buffer input buffer is cleared. It is clean. There is nothing now. Then I can read from a new line. I, I can read a new input line. OK, so if you have next int or next double and after next int or next double, if you have next line, then you have to issue a alone KB dot next line to clear the buffer. Then you can read from a new line. OK, this is important. Next int, next double, followed by next line. If you want to read from a new line, then please clear the buffer with this kind of statement. Here we let's continue. Enter several words. Enter your first names. Khalil and that. And first man. Hello, hello, man. What happened? I just read from a whole line my first name. From a whole line, the last name is red, and it said it's just printed hello space of the, after hello, and then first name is printed, and then uh, concatenated to it, and then a space character is concatenated to it. This space character here, and then last name. So. Uh, here, there is an example of using usage of the next line. Any questions about the usage of the scanner class or scanner object, a scanner object to input from keyboard? That's it. That's it. We will come to this has next line, has, has next, etc., etc., when we will deal with files. Okay. So I will continue with conditions and loops if you don't have any questions. No question? OK. So in order to use if statements and also for, for loops, while loops, etc., we need to know the conditionals or the Boolean expressions. Therefore, we need to know the equal and relational operators, logical operators. What are the equality and relational operators? Equal to and not equal to are equal to operators. Less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to are relational operators. These operators are same as the Python programming language, as you see. But uh, we will see that there are some differences as well when we will continue. For logical operators, exclamation mark is the logical not. There is in Python, we use the not keyword. But in Java, we don't use not keyword, we use exclamation mark. In for on and operator, we use double and, and for or operator, we use double vertical sign. What are the precedence of operators? If there is any parenthesis in an expression, the parenthesis is processed first. If there is an array sub uh, array index, then we use index. If there is an uh, object membership or class membership, we use that. Did, 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 did we use that in our programs? Yes. 
such as system dot out dot. Okay, here we have the dot operator. Class name dot out belongs to this class, so it is a member of the system class, and print is a method of the system class. Therefore, the, uh, we can call this dot as a membership operator. So the operators that has the operator that has the highest uh, precedence is the dot operator or the membership operator. Also, if we have in, an, in our expression some parentheses, the parentheses, the in, inside the parentheses is first executed and then the rest is executed. And if we have uh, arrays and index of arrays, then that, that, is, that has the highest precedence. And then at the second level, we have increment and decrement operators. Logical not operator, unary plus, unary minus. I, did I explain the, this a little bit to you last time? CS102. Let's open our whiteboard. Anyway, yeah, I have I have done it. It seems that I had explained this to you last lecture. Did I explain to you if statement? I'm surprised a little bit. I my memory betrays me. Did I explain to you if statement? Hello, anybody can answer me? On Monday, did I start at if statement? It seems I have started. OK, let me explain it again. In if statement, we I will then skip the rest of the operators, except the logical operators. The, the uh, equality and relational operators are same as Python, but these are different. You know the truth table for AND and OR operators. If I have an expression, which is true or false, another expression which is true or false, and the AND logical operator, logical AND operator between those things. If the first part is false and the second part, uh, the first part is A, the second part is B. If I have AND operator, in order to get a true result from the whole logical or Boolean expression, both A and B must be true. If any one of these are false, a and B will be false. In the OR case, if both are false, A, uh, a or B is false. If anyone is true, is either B is true or A is true or both are true, then I get true as a result of OR operation between two Boolean expressions. In this statement, the basic syntax is like that. Here we have if we must use parentheses, OK? If parentheses, here we write a condition. For example, assume that I have a variable n. If n is less than 100, this is how I do it. I have between parentheses a logical expression. In logical expressions, of course, I use equality or relational operators. I can also use logical operators. And if this is true, then I open. Um, a curly brace and between open curly brace and curly close curly brace, I just write my statement, whatever it is, OK? There may be, of course, more than one statements. I write all my Java statements here. If I have only one statement after if statement inside the if block, this is if block, okay? In the if block, if there is only a single statement, I may skip writing this. So instead of writing it like this, what I can do, let me copy this stuff, control C. If I only have one statement, I can omit this and continue. To. Therefore, the next line will be outside the if statement. Only this will be part of the if block. 
the next line will not be part of the if block. Even if I indent it, it doesn't matter. OK, if there is no curly brace. If there is no curly brace, then if statement only contain one. Statement in, in its block. The next statement will be outside the if statement. It doesn't matter if you even indent it that much or that much in Java or that much. It checks if there is a curly brace or not. If there is no curly brace, only one statement is part of the if block. If you have uh, to be sure, even if I if there is only one statement, I most of the time put something. I do something like that. OK. So next time, if I want to add a new line, what I do, I go here and then I add new line. So my program will not be. Wrong. If I change anything. So even if there is only one line, I suggest you to use curly braces. So in that case, it will be something like this. OK, so we have a condition inside parentheses. And after curly brace between curl, open curly brace and closed curly brace, we have one or more statements which makes the if block. If the condition is true, if the if the Boolean expression here is true, these statements, the whole if block is executed. Otherwise, it is not executed. If the condition or if the Boolean expression is false, <coughs> then it is skipped and it continues with the statement after the if statement. Same as uh, Python, except we have curly braces. Indentation is not important for the compiler, but it is important for us, the human beings, for the mortals, because our brain capacity is limited. So in order to understand a program, when we look to, the, to a program, when we read a program, it is important to have the necessary uh, indentation so that we will understand that, okay, this is part of the if block. There may be some programs in which the if statement may contain many lines, OK? It may be longer than a page. It may be something like this. If you indent correctly, you will even if you scroll up and down and there's ne next line, it will be here, something like this, etc. And before the if statement, of course, we have some statements, etc. So if I indent correctly, if I scroll down, OK, I'm still inside the if statement, OK? If, even though, if I don't see the beginning or the end, I will know it. So in that indentation is important for us. Not for compilers, but for us it is important. We can also use else statement. Let's remove all this. I can have an else part of the if statement. After else again, we open and close curly brace. If the condition or the Boolean expression here is true, the if part is executed. If the Boolean expression is false, the else part is executed. In either case, it will continue with the next statement. The philosophy is same with the Python if else. Again, if there is only one statement inside if block or there is only one statement inside the else block, you may skip the curly braces. But uh, as I said, when I write programs myself, I don't do that. This is uh, Java allows this. That's why I put it like that in my lecture notes. But when I write programs, I do it like that. Although there is only a single statement inside the else, I still continue to put these curly braces to be on the safe side. Nested if statement. If inside an if statement there is another if statement, then we call it nested if statement. So uh, let's go here. We have an if statement. Blah, 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 something. Then we have a curly brace. We have some stuff here. Then any statements. Now we have a nested. 
and if inside another if. Okay. Then we can also have it have several stuff here, several lines here. Now I have a nested if statement. I can maybe have some other statements after the if as well. And then close it. So I can have something like this, OK? Here I have a nested if, an if inside another if. This is called a nested if. There are cases where nested ifs are mandatory. You have to use nested ifs. Assume that uh, I will just write a program, small program here. Uh, let's go and check one of the programs here. Arrays, forget about arrays. I will. What I will do, I will erase this and create a new program. OK, I have my program array examples. Erase this. Now. Let's. Write uh, something about if steps. Assume that I have I'm reading from keyboard some values, but I will not read. I will just uh, to make it short. I will just string gender equal, for example, F for female and M for male. OK. And then I will also have here an integer variable age is equal to the age of a person. So I will keep the gender data and age data for a person in my program. Let's say 14. And the, pro the program will get the gender of the user, the age of the user, and will say hello girl, hello boy, hello woman, hello man, depending on the gender and age. OK. So at the end, we will have something like, uh, let's say, um, system dot out dot print ln. Hello. Uh, person P, let's say P, OK? So in P, I will have either girl or woman or boy or man, OK? So depending on the age and gender, depending on these two values, I will assign inside P, I will have a string P which is not assigned anything at the beginning. Then I will check if the gender, if open parenthesis, gender, by the way, we cannot compare two strings like that, OK? In Java, you cannot do that. How you can do that? How you can compare two strings? You can just say equals. There's an equals method. And here we have F, if it is equal to F. E if this string is equal to this string, we, how do we use equals? Let me put it here. Public methods, string class, character methods. OK, in string, comparison of strings. If I have string S1 equal something, OK? And if I have string S2 is equal to, again, some other thing. If I want to compare these two strings, what I do, I write if, open parenthesis, I take one of them, S1 equals, between parenthesis, I put the second one. If S1 and S2 have exactly the same characters inside, if they are equal, this will give me true, OK? If they don't contain exactly the same characters, if there is some difference between these two strings, then S1 dot equals S2 expression, or the method called, will give me false. So this is how we compare two strings for equality. So gender is gender is equal to the string F. If it is string F, then here we enter our first parenthesis. This is for woman, OK? 
for uh, for females. Female. Of course, then else will be for males. Okay, let's put here a comment. I do this kind. I, I write this kind of comments. This part is for females. This part is for males. Now I will check the age. If, of course, in we have to put parentheses. If age is less than 18, assume that up to 18 years of old, the part the the it is a girl or boy. Okay, and then what I will do here. P is equal to girl. I already defined string P. This is how I will address the person. Let's say Atr. How do we address it? If it is not less than 18, then I will have else. And I will just copy this part. Control. C and say woman. Okay. So if gender is female, F, if gender is equal to F, this uh, we will go to an executor's if part, and therefore this part is for females. If age is less than 18, we will call it girl, otherwise, we will call the person woman. And we will just do the same thing. Let's take this part, control C. Let's put it here. Okay. And instead of girl, it will be a boy. Instead of woman, it will be a man. And let's address that person here. Let's run the program. Hello, girl. Why it is? Said it, it, it chose girl. It's F and 14. Gender is equal to F? Yes. It goes here. G age is less than 18. 14 is less than 18. Yes. It will do this. Skip the else part. The else is then the if part is finished and it will continue with outside the whole if group. Let's change this. F instead of F, let's put here M. And then hello boy. Gender equals F is false. It will go to the else part. H less than 18. H is 14. 14 less than 18. True. Therefore, it will execute this part. It will skip else. This is finished and it will continue with this sprint LN statement. So this is an example of nested if. Okay. Any questions about this simple nested if? Of course. We could have here some extra statements. OK, here we can have some. What is this? I'm just pressing that. Come on. Anyway, this uh, Eclipse either do some st strange things. OK, let me do that. Of course, here I can have some other statements. It is possible to have extra statements, of course, in our program. But uh, there is a, another way of using the nestatives. If you understood this, I will erase this and continue it. In, or let's say let's say this one. Okay, I will do it here. Assume that I have um, a number, an integer number. And depending the value of the integer number, it, the program will either tell the number is negative or the number has a, is, has a single digit, is, post, uh, is positive and single digit, or uh, it is positive and two digits, or more than two digits. Okay, so the, if I give to, to the program an integer number like, for example, minus 54, it will say uh, negative. For all negative numbers, it will just print the number is negative. Okay, number 
is next. It will print this for all negative numbers. For positive numbers, what it will do? Number, it will say number has single digits. Uh, or it will say number has two digits. Two digits. Or it will say number has more than two digits. So I have several cases. Number can be negative. Number can be a single digit positive number, two digit positive number, or more than two digit positive number. So I have these five, these four cases. How can I implement this with a nested if statement? Let's put here a number, or even let's say, Open the scanner class. Uh, scanner. KB equal new. Scanner system dot in. Um, system. System dot out dot print. Enter a number. So don't forget semicolons. System. And then int num is equal to kb dot next int. Careful, the i here is capital. Okay, it is the beginning of the second word. Now I will start my if statement. If n is less than zero, so it is negative. Okay, so what we will do, we will say system out println print l n, and then let's put here our string, which is here. Number is negative. Or even better, what I will do instead of number is negative, I will just print the number itself and plus. Here, as you see, in all system out print elements or system out prints, I use integers plus strings because it requires a single string. In Java, when you concatenate or when you have a plus between a string, either the string is before or after plus, doesn't matter. And an integer value or a double value, what happens is that this integer or double value is automatically converted by Java to string, and then string concatenation is performed. There is only one string obtained inside the parentheses of the system out println, and it is printed. And then let's continue. Else if we don't have do we have elif? Yeah, I think we have elif, but uh, we will use else if. Okay. Else if n is less than 10. If it is less than 10, it will, it will have uh, a single digit. Why it will have single digit, but not negative, minus 55? Because if n is minus 55, this condition n less than zero will be true. It will execute this and it will skip the whole if else group. OK, so this part will only be executed. The second condition. The second condition will only be executed if this is false. If this is true, it will execute this part and continue with the statement after it. OK. And here, let's say. System dot out dot print and then the ant as in the old movies when I was a child when in Hollywood movies at the end it was writing on the screen the ant nowadays if they don't do that they just display the cast and other things and the people who put effort in the movie but at the, in old times, they were saying the ant, and then people was walking out of the theater. Anyway, let's go here. So here we will have another system out print LN. 
uh, n has a single digit. Has a single digit. Well, let's continue with this. Control C. V V. If n is less than 100, which means that 99 or less has two digits, otherwise has not has has more than two digits. Let's run the program and I will explain this in a, in a come on, what is song? Of course, I used num, but n here. Sorry. Num. Okay. Enter a number. Minus 88. N is negative. Let's run it again. Seven. Is a, has a, seven has a single digit, or is a single digit number? Twenty-eight has two digits. One hundred has more than two digits. Why? Now, if the first condition is false, then it will continue and go to the else part. If the condition, if the first condition is true, it will execute this and skip the whole rest, and it will continue with the next line. So the first condition is false for 100. Then it will go and check the second condition. 100 less than 10? No, this is false. Then it will go and check the next condition. 100 less than 100? No, it will go to the else part, and it will print this. It will execute this. Assume that we are entering 99 or 9. 9 less than what, 0? No. Therefore, now it will check the second condition. 9 less than 10? Yes. It will execute this block. And it will continue with after the if statement. Okay. This is the whole if else statement or nest if statement because there is an if inside else part. Okay. This is also called a nested if statement. Do you want me to do one more example about the nested if statements? I have a nice example. Let me do one more example. Assume that I have a car lang language code. Okay, lang code is the language code. If it is E, it is English. Let's put here a comment. Language quotes T for Turkish, of course, not E. For characters, if I have a character, I must use single quotation mark. Okay, the characters are expressed or are, are used or are written inside single quotation mark. T for Turkish, E for English, let's put a few of them, F for French, let's continue here, D for Deutsch or German, S for Spanish, that's enough. Maybe one more. And for Netherlands. So I have a language, assume that the language code is written from keyboard, it doesn't matter. And then I have an if statement. If I can directly compare characters, 
characters and strings are completely two different things. A character variable may only contain a single character and it can be directly compared. Okay. If long code equal T. And what I will do here, I will say string um, SS equal SS. And if this is the case, then what I will say, SS equal Uniden. Else if, I will just copy this part and put it here. If it is E, what will say? Good morning. Similar to this, let's do it for French, German, Spanish, and Netherlands. E, uh, next one is F. What is good morning in French? Bonjour. What is in German? Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. What is in Spanish? Do you know what is good morning in Spanish? Buenos dias. And probably you don't know any Netherlands, Dutch language. Boye Moche. G is spelled as G in Dutch. So after this, and uh, let's put one more else SS on long language. And then system of println SS. Okay. So you can have this kind of things. You can just compare individual items in an if else. Here we have just checked ranges of values My, from minus infinity to zero, from zero to 10, from 10 to 100, and after 100. Okay. Here in this if statement, if uh, in, in this nested if statement, we have checked using if else if statements range of a value. Okay. Less than one, if less than zero, from zero to less than 10, from 10 to less than 100, and equal uh, 100 and more is uh, in the else part. And here we have again if else if, but this time we have instead of comparing less than, less than, or less than, or equal, etc., or greater than, we have this, okay? We have just equal, uh, equally, double equal, or the equality operator. Let's run this. Enter number. Good morning. Because why? It was E. Therefore, length got length code equal T is false. This is true. It executed that block and continued with the statement after the whole if else block. So it will check again the first condition. If true, execute this and continue down. If false, check the second one. If false, check the third one. Whenever it finds something, let's put here S, example. We said now, we have now buenos, 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 buenos dias. Equal T, false. Equal E, false. Equal F, false. Equal D, false. Equal S, true. It executed that. Jumped, skipped, of course, the rest of the if block, continued to the next statement. Okay. Is this understood? Do you have any questions about these examples? Or in general, the if statement in Java? I advise you to definitely 
go and read the lecture notes. They, they do not contain too much explanation, but some basic information only, basic explanation only. There are several examples in below each explanation. If you just go and read this, you will have no difficulty. I've also put here the flow charts of these structures, the if state structure of if else structure, etc. Um, I hope you are able to read the flow charts. Here I have put some examples, but uh, these examples are even better. Oh, here in below KB there is a small uh, warning. Why? Because I didn't close the keyboard. KB doesn't close. It didn't close any. It didn't create any problem to me. It is just a small warning. Now KB is clean, okay? Because I closed the keyboard channel at that. Or I can even close it because after this next int, I have no more inputs. So what I can do when I have finished with my inputs, KB.nextInt is the last input in my program. I can put close just after the next, after the last input, keyboard inputs. Any questions about if statements? I will continue with switch statements. Oh, comparing strings. Before starting switch statement, I will explain to you how to compare strings. I've a little bit explained the equals, but this is just to check for equality or not non-equality. If you want to check if a string is lexically greater than another string, what I mean lexically greater than. Comparing strings. I have any compare strings. Let's put here something about that. Comparing strings. Assume I have two string variables. Okay, here I have a string S1 equal something A, B, C, D. And I have another string. We want me to make it bigger to see it more easily. S2, assume that my strings are S1 and S2. A, B, X. Now, when we compare two strings, for example, A, B, C, D, and compare A, B, X, the length has nothing to do in the result of the comparison. What counts is the characters inside the strings. The first character is capital A, the first character capital A equal, capital B, capital B equal, capital C and capital X, which is before and which is after. C is before, therefore ABC, D string is less than ABX, okay? Because X and C are the third characters and this code of the C or lexical C is before X. However, if I have A, B, X, I will change this anyway. A, capital A, capital A, lowercase b, lowercase b, lowercase c, and capital X, which is before, which is after. All uppercase letters are before all lowercase letters. Therefore, X is smaller than C. Therefore, ABCD is greater than ABX. Okay. Let's go and let me show you the ASCII table. 
This is our ASCII table. ASCII table is the uh, table which contains the binary codes of the characters as stored in inside a computer. So space character has code 32. Exclamation mark is 33. You just go uh, from left to right. Double quotation mark is 34, etc., etc. You don't need to memorize any of these, okay? This, this, you don't need to memorize any special characters. All you have to know is that space, oh, sorry, space has a has the smallest code of the printable characters. Somewhere after it, there are some punctuation marks, some some other signs, dollar sign, blah blah blah, parentheses, comma, dot, plus, asterisk, etc. At one point, there is zero. And then next character is character one, character two, up to character nine, followed up by some other special characters. And from A to Z, it follows in order. And then after some time, after Z, there are some other characters. And there is up, there is upper uh, low, uh, lowercase a to lowercase Z, starting from code 97. This is 32, or let's write here. You don't need to know that, but Space is less than character zero. Then it goes in sequence up to character nine. Less than character A up to character Z. Less than character lowercase a, lowercase b blah, 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 lowercase z. Of course, here we can write as well, lowercase, uppercase b, etc. So all you have to know is this. Space is before 0 to 9. Capital characters are before lowercase characters, but after the digit characters, OK? All you have to know is this one. If it will be also good to know that space has code 32, 0 has code uh, 48, A has code 65 and 97. Okay. These are the codes, but you don't need to know that. All you know, all you have to know is this one. Space has a lower code than this one is, or lexically smaller then character zero, character one is greater than character zero, character two is greater than character one, it just follows in sequence. Then all the digit characters are lexically smaller than uppercase letters, and all uppercase letters are lexically smaller than lowercase letters. Of course, A is smaller than B, B is smaller than K, okay? All you have to know is this one. So when you know, at least that part, at, at least this, you can just tell uh, about strings that do not contain any special characters. If they do not contain any dot, plus, minus, parentheses, etc., you can tell which string is uh, greater than or less than the other one. As I said in, in a few minutes ago, the length has nothing to do. This has four characters, this has three characters, but this is greater than this one because C is smaller than x. Let's do a few more examples. I, B, A, B, C, A, B, for example, A, B, 9. C and 9, which is smaller? 9 is smaller. 9 is before. C is somewhere here. 9 is here, therefore 9 is before C. Therefore, A, B, C, D is greater than A, B, 9. What else? Of course, I, if I just put dot, mat, dot, etc., I don't know myself where that is. Is it here or here before zero or before capital A or, or before lowercase a or be after Z? I don't know. So myself, even I write, write programs for almost 50 years. I don't I don't need to memorize all the rest. OK, this is all I have to know. If I have this, for example, a, b and let's say zero here or space here. I have a space here 
and I only have A and B. A and A are equal, B and B are equal, and this is finished. There is some extra character here. Therefore, this string is greater than the other one. Okay, This has extra character. Even space is a character. One more. A, B, space, space, Z, Z, Z. Which one is greater? Which one is smaller? Character A here, character space, which is smaller? Space is smaller. Therefore, this string is smaller. This string is greater. Therefore, we need to put here greater. Okay. We compare character by character. First, the first characters are compared. If I have, for example, A here and B, blah, blah. A and A are equal. Here I have character B, character space as second characters. Space is before B. Therefore, A, B space is greater than A space, etc. Et, et. How do I compare? For equality, I compare using uh, if s1 dot equals s2 if they are equal this will be if equal then true not equal then false i will get false okay If equal, let's put equal, then true, not equal, then false. This is quite simple. You don't need to put anything after it. But if I want to compare if it is greater than, less than, lesser or equal, etc., what I do? If S1 dot compare to S2. Now I can have an idea which string is before and which string is after. Of course, I have to put here greater than zero, for example. <clears throat> this means S1 is greater than S2. If S1 is greater than S2, S1 compared to S2 gives me a positive number. This is the explanation, okay? Let's put a comment here. Let's copy this. Greater or equal, by chance, S1 and S2 may contain exactly the same characters. <clears throat> in that case, compare to will give me a zero. Or in other case, S1 is greater or equal to S2. I can write this. Less than, less than or equal. And just put here, less than and less than and equal. I can also use. equal equal zero to check for equality or not equal zero to check for not equality but it is easier to write equals than compare to an equal equal this and this are identical okay so this statement and that statement are same therefore instead of using equal equal zero it is better to write equals is it understood? If S1 dot compare to is positive, it means that S1 is greater than S2. If S1 compared to S2 is negative, it means that S1 is smaller, lexically smaller, or the codes on S1 is are smaller than the codes of characters in S2. If it is, if the compare to gives me uh, plus equal as plus uh, greater than or equal to zero it means that s1 is greater than or equal to s2 if s1 compared to s2 is less than or equal to zero it means that the first string s1 is less than or equal to s2 okay. here are our strings okay this is how we compare strings any questions about compar comparing strings Switch statement. 
this uh, completely new stuff in Java. You don't have anything similar to it in <clears throat> Python. These are new. What do we use switch statement? The switch statement is to check individual uh, the, to check if a variable or an expression is equal to the to some individual values. For example, if id car is equal to a, it will execute that part. If id car is equal to b, it will execute that part. If id car is equal to c, it will execute that part. Otherwise, it will execute the default part. Okay? So if I have something like this, Let's go and put it here. And what I will do. Make it more readable. Yeah. If I have something like this, I can write the same thing here. I understand that since I have single quotation mark, when I look to this program, to this the first three lines, uh, at the beginning, I don't know. I don't have any idea about ID car when I look to the switch, but when I look to the case correct case, the first case, it is single quotation mark a single quotation mark. I understand that ID car is a character. Okay. So I can write the same thing with an if statement. If ID car equal a. Then this statement then else if open parenthesis and let's copy this if equal to b increase the b count but take this if id card is equal to C, if it is equal to C, C count is increased. I will explain the breaks, etc., everything in a few minutes. C count. If it is not A, not B, not C, it will go and execute default. Therefore, here I can write else. Put this statement here. Okay. Sorry. Like this. So you can implement this switch with a nested if. You can always implement switches with nested ifs. Personally, I don't like switch statements, but it is part of the Java programming language. I prefer writing it like this. But frequently in some programs, you can find switch statements because uh, some people find it easier to read and understand a switch statement. If ID car is A, then do this part. If ID car is equal to B, do this part. So if the case about ID car is A or B or C, do this. If it is not anything defined before, then execute the default. What is this break? Break statement just finishes the switch and continues after it. Okay. If you don't have a break, what will happen? Um, let's assume that I have this. In this case, it is not like this. This this is valid for the case where there was a break before the case B. Okay, so the second part is not exactly the same with switch. If I remove this breaker, what happens if ID car is equal to A? It will check here. Case A is correct. Therefore, it will execute this and it will continue as long as there is a break statement. After increasing a count, it will increase b count and then break if id car is equal to a. If id car is equal to b, it will find it here, execute this and break, finishes and goes out. If id car is equal to c, it will come here, execute c count plus plus, break, finishes the switch. If ID card is not A, not P, not C, 
then it will go to default. It will execute this statement and it will finish. So when there, when it is one of the cases, for example, let's remove this one as well. In this case, if ID card is equal to A, it will increase A count, it will increase B count, it will increase C count, and then finish. If ID card is not A but B, it will go here, do that, do that, and break. If ID card is C, do this and break. So sometimes this is wanted, okay? There are some special problems that requires this kind of logic to solve, okay? So this is one of the, uh, it, 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 it may be, it may be the case that a case in a switch statement may not end with a break statement. You can purposely, purposefully do this if uh, this solves your problem. If it is A, I want to increase A, B, and C. If it is B, I want to increase B and C. If it is C, it's I want only I only want to increase the C count. Then I have to write it like that. And it is not easy to do it here. Okay. If it is A, increase A count. Let's put here curly brace. This upper part will be identical with this one. If it is A, increase A and B count. If it is B, and also C count. If it is B, increase B count and C count. Okay. And if the C only increase C count, then this nested if is exactly doing the same thing with the switch. If it is A, increase A count, B count, C count, and then break. If it is B, if ID card is equal to B, increase B count, increase C count, and then break. So I have something like this. So if, if the statement here A count plus plus can be replaced with five lines or 10 lines and B count plus plus can be replaced with eight lines, 12 lines, etc. And writing it here, five lines, 12 lines, etc. 12 lines here, etc. will be too uh, confusing. In that case, switch will be easier to implement. Okay, if you have such a case, but most of the time, most of the time we have Usually, I mean, break here. Okay. This is the normal case. Have to have a break after each case is the normal case, but depending on the solution of a special problem, you may have the other way around. This switch I understood. Let's let me do it with a numerical example. Let's let's go to Eclipse. Uh, OK, here I had an if statement. I will replace this if part with a switch statement. Switch. I check I want to check num. OK. And then I will have some cases. Case, come on, anyway, didn't in, in, in that, but not, doesn't matter. If case, for example, zero, we will do something here. Uh, let's say println. Let's use println's. And then break. And then case one. Let's copy these statements here. Let's copy all these statements. Two. 
two. And if it is not zero or one or two, default. System out, print LN. Much. When I was a child, my father told me he read some from some book. There was an African tribe. <clears throat> the African tribes number system had only zero, one, two and more. Not much more. OK, their number system only contained. Four numbers, number zero, number one, number two and more. They only can count up to two. Anything beyond two was more for them. Okay. Anyway, we have the enter number. It is too big. It is more. Let's run it again. Two. We print two. Okay. So here you can have a numerical expression. And here you can use those expressions. You have to be careful about uh, usage of pitch switch. You can only use integer, byte, short, car, and string expressions here. Okay. It can be either a variable or an expression. I, what I can do, num minus four. I can do this, for example. Let's run it. If I enter five, num minus four will be one, so it will print one. Okay, five to print one because this expression is evaluated, and the result is compared with these values. Okay, there there may be an expression here. The result of this expression is checked for the given cases. If it is equal to any case then that block is executed. If there is a break, it will skip the rest and continues outside. If there is no break, it will continue with the next case as well. Any questions? I hope this is understood. I've lost, we have lost four students. Okay, I will stop uh, recording.